Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? I am going to bring you um, a message that honestly, it started coming through months ago in little, little downloads here and there. And it wasn't something that I even spoke about. But as with all downloads and messages that are meant to get your attention, if you don't get it the first 15 times, it gets louder. It comes in different formats, different ways, but it, st it stays coming to you until you recognize it, until you pull it into your being. So this is a message that is really driven home from the teachings of Maggie and Yeshua. And because of the messages from these beautiful, wise, divine beings being so manipulated, molested, and downright fucked up. The masses of women and men, divine masculine and divine feminine, are so struggling to, number one, identify who they really are, not based on a societal construct, not based on the noise around them, but based on where their soul guidance is leading them. It feels so completely out of left field because of the mind manipulation that we all have survived. Some people are still really truly rooted in that patriarchal system that we are desperately trying to escape because it is not the way. It is not the way that we are supposed to be in a higher consciousness state of living. So in general, the message is the divine feminine is struggling to fully rise to her fullest potential because of commitments, feelings, fears, insecurities, all rooted in the patriarchal system. Those that have a partner that is their divine partner, not a karmic relationship, I mean a divine partner, cannot fully balance that relationship unless the divine partner is up to speed. But many, many divine feminines have been doing the work. They have been putting forth the effort to do the shadow work, to understand their purpose, to understand their mission, um, to better themselves for, for not only for them in the now moment, but going forward. Also, their frequency is just zooming, zooming, zooming and all that they're, they can't learn enough. They can't evolve enough. Then you factor in the children, the children that were born fully activated, higher consciousness beings. So now you have the husband, the father, feeling all the power of being the dad being the husband, being the patriarch of the family and all that entails. They, they bring home the paycheck. They provide the roof over the head. They provide food in the refrigerator. They provide safety and security to an extent. All the while, completely freaking oblivious to the fact that it's the frequency of their children and their wife or partner that is bringing them along in the ascension journey. Because they really are in it together. But through ignorance, either willful or otherwise, 
they are truly lacking in fundamental information as to why their entire family is evolving around them and they aren't. So tell me, how can the divine feminine truly rise into her position of power and respect and safety and security when the divine masculine that is supposed to be balanced with them is oblivious? So out of fear of repercussion and not wanting to rock the boat, the divine feminine stays silent in her journey, in her quest. And that there may be some intention to break the news to them later, so to speak. But the further down the road you get, the harder it is to go back to the beginning. And I fear that it won't be received very well because of the egos that, that the the divine masculines have, you know, there are many that I encounter. I'm not over-exaggerating this. Many have absolutely no clue of the divine powerful being that they're married to. They have no clue that the energy accountability within their own home that is keeping the light within and the dark out comes from their divine feminine partners, not them. How would that sit with the ego of the man who feels the need to provide all those same things and is under the belief that they're doing it? So I feel for the divine feminine. I feel for the divine masculine. I feel for the inner child of both because there that feeds some of the wounding of the inner child for lack of a sense of security and trust and support. So as much work as the divine feminines are doing to anchor Christ consciousness, to be the, the frequency leader in their clan, I feel the time is coming very quickly that the truth has to be spoken to those closest to us. If this has been something that has been the big, huge question mark in your life, like you know how to do things for yourself and you know how to initiate change for your children, but you don't know how to approach it with your spouse or your partner. I hope that some of the information I cover today will help you go within and determine for yourself what is your next best course of action, because I do feel like the time is now that you decide, okay, enough is enough. We have to have the conversation that may or may not go very well. I have no idea, but I want to remind you of something that you may or may not be aware of. This time, six months ago, the collective consciousness, which is to say the frequency of the collective, was under 250 hertz. That was still, you know, low vibrational and really not in a realm that messages could be received that are of a higher frequency. Now, we're above 8,000 Enlightenment is at 1,000. There is no reason why the messages cannot be received besides ego. Ego and the manipulated mind. However, there are many who we thought were never going to wake up. And they're coming around. They're coming around because the collective consciousness is rising. They're able to see truth easier. They're able to discern and decipher the messages that are coming into their being at a higher vibratory rate. It's like having a supercharged processor on your computer where you're not just 
slowly drudging through the information and the data, same old, same old, same old. No, instead it's high speed processing and it's throwing out the junk right and left and it's getting down to the the truth of, of the matter. So that has been very, very helpful for the beings that are just now getting their aha moments. So I also invite you <clears throat> to go back in my earlier videos when I was in that same position in that aha moment and share them because I went through my journey in front of a camera. I shared every trial and tribulation with you all and it's there. It's at least a conversation piece. Even if nothing gets uh, agreed upon, it's a conversation starter. Many times I'm the voice, I'm the one saying the things that you're thinking and you don't know how to say it. Use me. That's why Source asked me to do this channel so that the words that I speak can be used for the greater good. However that looks, that's fine. Go back in those early videos, you know, those what does frequency have to do with anything videos because it's so important to understand that. On a day-to-day -day basis, we talk about frequency all the time because it matters. It matters a whole lot more than your political affiliation. So don't feel like you're alone. You're not. I Trust me, you're not. I have had many, many conversations with many divine feminines that are going through the same exact trials. But to that, I say, there's always a choice. So I want to go through a few things that I jotted down over the course of the last few months. These are just kind of random downloads, but they're on the same subject matter. When, uh, when a partner, either one, and no matter the scenario, when one is not completely and totally honest with the other, when one is basically living a uh, secret life, secret friends, secret abilities, secret conversations, whether it be ascendant masters, spirit guides, um, people in real life. And it develops into understanding souls on a different level. So now you have one half of a couple that really understands their entire um, divine soulmate relationship. They understand past life trauma. They understand shadow work involved to heal. They understand the power of words. They understand balance. And then you have the other one left out in the cold. Is that fair? And you may say, but they would not have listened. It's not for you to decide. The choice is not, should I tell so-and-so the truth because he's not going to take it well? Or should I tell so-and-so the truth because she's just going to think I'm crazy? Well, you're projecting your lack of confidence in that person onto them. Instead, I ask you to do this simple thing. Meditate on clarity. Talk to your higher self. And in a way, you basically want to mimic the conversation you really truly intend to have with your higher self. Are they ready for this? If I say this, is this okay? Is this the highest and best thing to say? If it's not, Give me some clues. What if I use this word instead? What you want to do is to find some commonality. Very rarely are two people still together at this point in time that have no common ground. Find that common ground and use it to relate the growth in a positive way. This can be a very positive conversation. And I want you to remember where you were when you first started having your aha moments, when you first were 
red pilled. Did you want to tell every single person you ran into the truth as you have known it to be? Yes. But did you? No. Because you were afraid. Because you weren't sure what you thought you knew anyway. You just want to keep that quiet. Do you think maybe now with the rise in frequency, your partners may be having the same thoughts? What if the conversation goes something like this? Have you ever thought about the potential that the essence of me and the essence of you have known each other many, many lives? What if that opens up the ability for that other part of your half to say, I felt like that so many times, but I was afraid to say it. See, there's cultural things that have enveloped all of us in shame, blame, guilt, fear, frustration. They're usually are rooted out of religious indoctrination and dogma, cultural norms and society expectations. Is that all valid reasons to keep the truth from the person you love most in life and after? That is where I really truly feel it on an, on an empath level. Like I feel both sides. I feel the divine feminine not being supported. I feel the divine feminine going to battle for the greater good of humanity with no support or knowledge from their divine partner. So in a way, they're going to have to get to know you again when you're ready to show them the truth of who you have evolved into while you wait for them to catch up. And what if they say, why didn't you talk to me sooner? Why didn't you trust me sooner? Why didn't you have faith in me like you had faith in you? These are all real, possible, plausible responses to someone who loves you dearly, realizing that you have been 100% invested in something they knew nothing about. Granted, you may have tried to talk to them before, and because the frequency mismatch was in place, they could not receive the message. That doesn't mean that person is today who they were then. You're not who you were then today. We are constantly evolving. Give them credit for it too. You want to have credit for your growth. You want to have credit for how you've evolved. Do the same thing for your partner, right? So I don't want to see relationships blow up. That is not the purpose of this video. This message is meant to be received in a way that you understand the planet and the people are on a trajectory of ascension. How long are you going to leave your divine soulmate out of the conversation? Invite them in. These things cannot be stopped. Especially if you know that their soul contract is to be with you. Invite them in. It's up to them to receive the message. We are only asking you to share your truth. This brings me to the next point. We don't want there to end up being judgment of one to the other because one's not coming along or doesn't want to hear or they're feeding into the narrative and they're using labels that are harmful and hurtful. And then that builds up resentment. I hear a lot of all beings, not just divine feminine, say, when are things going to change? I want to see change in the world. And I've always said it, everything's changing. It's always changing. It's a matter of your perception. What are you focusing on? Do you focus to, to find the change? Do you focus on being the change? So I ask you, are you starting the crusade of changing for the greater good in a positive way within your own home? 
are you still towing the narrative of satanic holidays and indoctrination education? I, I don't know. But there are many, many choices we can make in a day that can completely change the trajectory of your whole family's life from the lies that we had to scrape and claw and find our way out of to the truth. And at what point is the, the best time for that? The divine feminines are coming into their power. They're trying to very, very hard. They've been doing the work. How powerful can any being be live in a secret life? How powerful can they be with an imbalance in their relationship, an imbalance within themselves? When you do not have faith in yourself to stand in your truth and sovereignty and speak your truth and defend it, how powerful are you? I do not mean to come across in a antagonistic way. I don't. But these are really tough situations that deserve some thought and some introspection. Put yourself in that other person's place. How would you feel? It's not all about feelings, but how would you feel? Because they're going to feel that. And it's not going to feel very good initially. When we speak our truth and exercise our throat chakra, when we allow truth to come in through our crown and activate our third eye to see beyond what our eyes can comprehend, see beyond the veil is a, is a common term. When you're seeing and de digging deeper into the truth, it's exciting. It's exciting for me whenever I breach another lie and find the truth. I'm super excited about that. I want to share it. Imagine how much you'd have to disclose at this point to the partner you've been with forever. And they're going to say, you didn't just find all this out. Oh no, no, I've been doing this for quite a while. And it's just at that point, you get to be honest and say, you know, you really weren't in a place to receive the information that I was receiving. We were in the same place physically, but energetically, I was doing a lot of internal work and growth, which opened me up to truths that you were not ready for. But I truly believe you're ready to hear them now. Soften the blow. There's reasons why one went down the path and not two. Just be honest. The time for lies and deception are over with. How can you have full disclosure and want it? Chant disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. But you're hiding truths within your own marriage, our partnership, our family. Some have to understand that their expansion of their being and their energy field, it's palpable. I, I dare say, how many partners and, and husbands or wives don't notice the expansion? Have they truly not noticed that you're brighter, you're lighter, and you're full of joy, and you just perceive and filter the, the whole world differently now. That expansion should be celebrated. Instead, it's being hidden, whispered about, secret conversations. It's not Facebook talk, really. Although I'm not really on there much and I went, um, I went over to that platform to share some videos and I am surprised at the conversations that are, that are taking place and I'm excited about them and I feel like they're going to, they're going to get there and some of them already are. So that's awesome. Many divine feminine struggle with 
protecting their children and protecting their spouse from disclosure because it's not nice. Doesn't make them feel good. Might make them feel like crying, might hurt their feelings. Let me just clearly say, feeling the feels as we grow is a part of shadow work. To rob someone else of that opportunity is not for us to do. It's better to be present on the work through, deliver the truth, however it is received, it gets received, and be there to help guide after the fact. Yes, the truth hurts. Yes, to understand that so much that we've all been taught has been based on lies and manipulation fucking sucks. I am not making any excuses for that. What I am saying is I feel it's more important to use your energy for guidance back to truth versus trying to protect people from the truth at the same time you want the truth to come out. You see the hypocrisy there? It's not, it's not really for us to protect other beings from their life either. Okay. Every being has a soul contract. Every being is supposed to encounter and learn from opportunities presented to them for them based on their soul contract. If you're overstepping out of concern, out of love, out of a sense of obligation, those are just reasons why you're really overstepping. Pull back and be there to guide back to the truth. Because you can't always protect someone from the truth. The truth will find them as it should. I want to stress the importance of integrity and authenticity and sovereignty. These are things we hear all the time that people say they endeavor to be. I want to be sovereign. I am my own being. Don't tell me what to do with my body. My authentic self, all these things. In order to be truly in your integrity, it means that you're doing the right thing all the time, no matter what the consequences are. You speak the truth, even though the truth may not be received well by all, it's still the right thing to do. It's been my life for the last two years. It's not up to me to tell you how to receive the message. My acceptance of my mission is delivering the message as it resonates within my soul as truth, delivering it in a most neutral way that I can so that you can decide what resonates with you, within you and make your own choices. If I decided for everyone how they would receive my information, I would spend all my energy trying to fine tune my message to please and it would lack truth for sure. So what are the consequences of being less than authentic? So let's say you're really working on your spiritual accountability and your energy field accountability, and you make sure that things are clear and you make sure that you don't even receive messages from any benevolent being, unless you're clear and you double check everything. And you're really, you know, you're really in your integrity until it comes time to speak about things to the beings you love the most. Then you're quiet. What is the effect of that on our energy body? Well, it causes core wounds. Why? Because there's a lack of trust, because there's a lack of support, because a divine masculine is supposed to hold space in a protected space for the divine feminine to flourish, for the divine feminine to feel protected and safe in their creativity, in their nakedness, in their passion, in their love, in their nurturing, and anything that the divine feminine can create in a mindset, in a vision, the divine masculine is there prepared to create it in the physical. Balanced union. If you have that, 
this message is really not for you. Share it to someone who can help. It can help. I have seen it firsthand. Many, many, many are out of balance with the ones they love the most because the fear of speaking the truth is overwhelming them. Let me just say, ever since I was very young, I, I first of all, suck at telling lies. So I don't even try. But I was always accused of hurting people's feelings because I was so blunt and I told the truth. But I thought, well, at least you know the truth. At least I'm not lying. And truth can be respected. You may not like it. You may not like how it came across. You may not like how people say something. It doesn't negate the fact that the message is true. And that is accountability. That is maturity. That is soul evolution. When you move, remove the ego out of it, who gives a shit? As long as you receive the truth. If you're pounding your fist on the table saying, I demand disclosure, you better suck it up, buttercup, because disclosure is going to hit you square between the eyes and it's going to fucking hurt. It's going to suck. When you realize how deep the webs of deception go and how far and wide the controllers that were took advantage of all of us, it's going to hurt. But the truth does need to be told. That's exactly what I do all the time. This message is probably making you feel sick because your body is saying, this is us. This is us. And I have a choice to make. When we don't speak our truth, we get throat chakra, um, congestion, things get blocked. Your throat chakra will actually contract out of fear of speaking your truth. When you don't want to realize the truth about something, sometimes your crown chakra will contract down. Sometimes it'll become blocked because you have decided this isn't for you. If you're having random aches and pains that have no really real rhyme or reason to it or cause that you can come up with, it could be attached to you not speaking your truth. If you feel like you're always purging and detoxing in a way that is above and beyond um, the collective, this could be byproducts of not speaking your truth and being in your integrity. If you are nagged, by these background feelings of fear or concern over what someone might do if they learn the truth, that's shadow work to do. When we start to label our partners and our family members, just like we're afraid of them labeling us, this is a wake up call. This is where the resentment is starting to divide the, the union. And it is not necessary if we just spoke our truth. When we are less than honest, it gives fuel to a negative fire. When we are less than honest, truth dispels the lies and weakens them. Isis taught me that. The more people discover the truth and speak about it, it weakens the lies, pokes holes into their narrative. Feelings of not being supported are valid. But when you are complicit in the lack of support because you have been secretive about things, it's not just one person's fault, is it? And I say fault and I say blame and I say things like that that are low vibrational. That's also part of the problem. So you're always wanting to be high vibe and you're always wanting to Make sure your frequency doesn't drop, but yet you're actively participating in a <laughs> secretive campaign to keep the truth from people you love the most, which is low vibrational. So you have a choice to make. 
if you feel like you've not been taken seriously in the past when you've tried to share your truth, I remind you, the collective consciousness, the frequency of the collective right now is over 8,000. Anyone who's presented with truth can receive it. It's up to them. There's a choice to make. It's not up to you to decide how beings receive the truth. It is up to you to decide to stand in your truth and sovereignty and speak it. Plain and simple. And then let it go. Let it go. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. If you're truly willing to walk this walk, you have to be able to walk it in all environments uh, against anyone. I feel like there's a big thank you as well coming from some of the partners to say, thank you for not leaving me behind. Like, thank you for bringing me along, even though I was completely oblivious to what was happening. I, th I feel like there's a big thank you coming and you may get that sooner than you think. I also feel like there are those that are dug in. They, they just don't want to see change in that way. They are completely fearful from whatever reason. And so they just actually need more LFG, more love, more forgiveness, more gratitude. They don't need more um, friction. They don't need more combative conversations. They don't need more labels and more judgment. There's plenty of that to go around. For people to really truly understand the growth of, of what we have accomplished on a soul level, those that are truly trying their very best to embody the divine role that we are in, we should definitely be operating from the fifth dimensional Christ consciousness psyche and soul and energy body, not the lower dimensional blame, duality, pick a side, I'm right, you're wrong, none of that. Trying our very, very best to be loving, forgiveness, and full of gratitude and from a place of neutrality and approaching things from our very wide open heart chakra is the key to traversing all these hurdles. Most of these hurdles that we've put before ourselves are really been created in our own mind because you haven't had the conversation. You haven't had the conversation with a, a being that is in, of a frequency that can actually receive the truth. So it's almost like you've made up this entire dramatic story because you haven't actually heard it from them. You just, I just know them. I just know how it's going to be. I just know how it's going to go down. The patriarchal teachings robbed divine masculine as much as it did divine feminine. There's many, many, many men put in positions to hold the line, so to speak, and that never set well with them. But they are also under the pressure of the collective around them. The other men in the family, maybe it was men in church, maybe it was coworkers, you know, maybe they really wanted to be more loving and supportive and nurturing with you, but they were shamed out of it. Having a conversation with them could open up healing that in them. And allowing them to understand that, yes, this is exactly how we are meant to be. And no, those men that think that they know everything are wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. They're part of the problem. And we're part of the solution. The truth is, is that many divine masculines have been lagging behind. Some of them are ignorant because they choose to block out truth because it makes them uncomfortable. Things that make people uncomfortable usually manifest in fear or in a, a verbal attack or, or, you know, just mean spirited because it, they want to run from it. They want it to get away from them. Things that make them uncomfortable, not knowing fully how liberating this truth truly is to unpackage the, the lies and the chains that have kept people feeling completely stuck. Life after life, mind you, to get to this point. 
It's not easy to overcome, but it is possible. It is a choice. When the divine feminine is on their journey and they are activating in beautiful ways and they are becoming one with mother nature again, and they are talking to the birds and the the animals and the flowers and the water and the earth and the wind, everything is beautiful. The only time they have peace is when they're in their sovereignty, in their integrity, out in nature, not with their spouse. They have a different kind of joy, happiness with that person, but it's actually resembling the past not the now. And it leaves them wanting and wondering, what would my life look like if they actually knew the truth of me? What would my life look like if they actually knew the truth of the world? What would my life look like? Well, your truth doesn't have to be separate and apart from theirs. It can be the same truth together. It's a choice. The other thing I will say is there are many men who feel like because they earn a paycheck and because they're the man, the husband, the father, that all the decision making falls to them. And they love that part in the Bible about wives being subservient to men. However, I would like to discuss this one a little differently. So the premise is that men are wise. They're the wiser ones. They're not emotionally charged and flighty, which is something that they try to say about women all the time. In the last few months, most divine feminines are more grounded They have accepted wisdom from the ascendant masters who have all lived human lives and ascended and transcended the dimensions up and out of it. So they are the epitome of wisdom. They have connected with their higher selves and they're making decisions for themselves and their children based on higher self guidance. Why would you let the kid in the classroom that never does their homework and never helps anybody else out, why would you let them have the key to the classroom? Like, why would you let them go up to the chalkboard and start giving lessons? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. If you tell a two-year-old no, or you tell them the truth, and they don't like it, and they get on the floor of Walmart and start kicking and screaming, do you give them the keys to the car? No. You stop giving that attention. You give energy to the truth and the the goodness of your life and you keep moving forward. Then they have a choice to either stay on the floor kicking and screaming or join the family. So allowing that, that ignorance is bliss thing to continue is a disservice. You're literally disempowering yourselves. You have a choice. When you are deciding to just keep getting along, to keep getting along, you're escaping. You are escaping the truth. You are avoiding the conversation and it is going to happen eventually. So does it happen whenever, you know, so-and-so comes into your life and say, "Ah, I can't wait. I can't believe I finally met you. We've been talking for a year. Your husband says, who's this? Why haven't I never heard of her before? Yeah, because she's a super secret quantum energy person. Talking about the fifth dimension and Arcturians. Holy shit. Look, there is worse things that come through the tell uh, vision that are so false and so satanic. I'm not hiding behind my truth. That is my cross to bear. And I do it with with happiness and joy. It is not up to me to decide how you perceive that truth. I hope you perceive it well. I hope you see it as a ticket out of the negative loop of information that we all grew up in. 
you have a choice. If you're frustrated that nothing is happening and you're frustrated that not enough truth is being told, I want you to go to the mirror and practice telling your spouse your truth. Start there. Be the change. When we are in a high functioning, high conscious frequency, we make lower frequency beings uncomfortable. That's a fact. I want to believe that those that live with you if you're higher frequency, are also zooming up that frequency scale. I want to believe that. It's possible that they're not. It's possible you're married to someone who doesn't have that ability to do that. That's a completely different situation. And that is that is not the relationship to fight for because it's karmic and it's not supposed to go with you to the next dimension. It doesn't ascend with you. You're supposed to let it go. I have videos on all that too, but that's not about this conversation. But when you want to maintain that high frequency and you want to be in your integrity and you want to stand in your sovereignty and you want to speak your truth, you have to be speaking your truth all the time. It's 100%. It's all or nothing. It's a commitment to yourself. It's a commitment to the source creator. It's a commitment to the, the divine soul contract that you entered into willingly before you ever incarnated on this planet. And now it's time for you to rise into the power of the divine feminine and, and know it is your birthright. It is nothing to hide. It is nothing to be ashamed of. It is nothing to keep secret. Your abilities, your guides, your knowledge, your wisdom, your growth should be celebrated, not hidden, right? That is the world we want to live in. Unity consciousness, that is the world we want to live in. <clears throat> this is something I jotted down this morning when I woke up with this message pounding in my head. To the Divine Feminine Collective, it's time to remember who you all are. It's time to embody your power, your gifts, your abilities, and the expansion that you have facilitated in your own growth. So your big, beautiful, nurturing, wise, creative energy can lead, can heal can love in a way others have never experienced, can guide, can laugh uncontrollably, can anchor the higher consciousness frequencies for others, can balance good and bad, leaving duality behind, can cultivate a loving Christ consciousness community. In order to do that, we have to fully embody the fifth dimension way of living, leaving and detaching from the lower dimensional ways of living. If you have scraped and clawed your way to the truth like I have, you want to remember the essence of you. You want to remember that that is your power, not the clothes you wear, the car you drive, or the house you live in, not the alma mater, none of that. That's not your power. The power is the essence of you. That is what is to be celebrated. Respect. We all want that. Love. We all want that. Truth. We all want and deserve that. Safety. Unity. We want that. But more than that, we do deserve it. And you are worthy of it. It's not okay to decide for your partner that they can't know the full story. So then they don't have the opportunity to provide you with respect for your growth and evolution, truth, love, safety, and unity. You're robbing your entire relationship of these opportunities because of who the person used to be and who you used to be and how those messages kind of got lost in the mix. Robbing yourself. You have a choice. You have a choice. 
We have earned the right to have light and love in our life, to be respected for our abilities and our gifts, and for each and every person to have the ability and the option to talk to their higher self. In order to do that, there has to be conversations about how you get there. Whether the person wants to receive the message or not, it's completely up to them. I'm going to read a small, short passage from the Sophia Code from Isis Key Code 1. In my book, it's on page 87. As I am the tree of life, I honor the Sephira of Giburu, the strength and power breathing within me. I honor the divinity of my humanity by consecrating the strength and power of my body as a holy temple for the mighty presence of the higher self to live entirely within me. I honor the divinity of my humanity by consecrating the strength and power of my mind to fulfill my higher self's destiny for this lifetime. I honor the divinity of my humanity by consecrating the strength and power of my free will to fulfill the divine with my oversoul. I honor the divinity of my humanity by consecrating the strength and power of my ability to command miracles, to be in sovereign service for the higher good of all. I affirm this truth independent of any passing understanding. I am the perfect human vessel for the strength of my sovereign power to consecrate a new golden age. I am that. I hope that that gives you some encouragement as a wise message from a very wise Ascendant Master Isis. Understanding that holding on to your truth, speaking your truth and knowing who you are on a soul level, standing in that sovereignty and fighting to keep it, maintain it to the very end is your birthright. I am open for one-on-one -on -one guidance. I'm open to help you figure out the best way to maybe have these conversations because just the thought of it is overwhelming. Truth Resonates podcast drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. where I disclose mission details about how we've helped humanity on a global scale. You can get a quantum energy transformation session, which clears up all the negativity in your energy being and the negative distortions and helps you find the truth within yourself so you can really supercharge your ascension journey. I ask you to speak your truth, be authentic, practice it in the mirror, write it down, deliver it in a letter. It doesn't really matter how you deliver it. I just want you to start somewhere. Let the truth out and speak it because it helps to get that weight off of you and free that negative energy up out of your own being. The rest will be exactly as it should. I hope this message finds you well. Have a blessed day.